What's up guys? It is Saturday. This is the second, third Saturday. Well, uh, left on April 11th. Tomorrow's May 1st. So, it means it's been a couple days. I don't remember exactly which day it is and I don't feel like stopping to count right now. Anyway, I'm leaving the uh, Quality Inn and Suites here in Eugene, Oregon, uh, which uh, I'm still kind of uh, butthurt about. And the reason is, is because one, I stayed in a casino suite over in Nevada for $37, had a queen bedroom, or had a king bed in it, um, and I could have stayed at the same hotel, could have stayed at a jacuzzi suite for 100 bucks. Um, because a bunch of motivated people decided they wanted to get together and run for fun, there's a marathon going on here in Eugene, Oregon. Evidently, there was no, there's no hotels available. That being said, I got stuck with this one. And the reason I came all the way out to Eugene is because my phone said that you could get hotels out here for 60 to 80 bucks versus where I was in Crescent Lake, they were 100, 120 bucks. Well, my phone um, had decided what dates it wanted to stay at a hotel versus what dates I wanted to stay at a hotel. So that being said, it was for, um, it was for uh, like May 8th or some crazy shit. Nonetheless, anyway, I get all the way out here, $116 for a smoking queen bed room. Now, I used to be a smoker, and I have no clue how, um, how I dealt with that smell because it's absolutely horrible. Uh, but nonetheless, I never smoked inside the house either, so. But nonetheless, anyway, so I had to stay here. Um, it did give me uh, time to get some stuff uploaded. Um, I'm working on the video. The video should be done by today and should be uploaded, so um, that's that. I'm going to hop on the interstate. I've got to drive 100 miles. That's the other problem I'm butthurt about. I misread the map. Um, I went northwest versus southwest. I should have gone southwest, but... Anyway, I'm going to drive down. I'm going to hook up with the Transamerica Trail, which is roughly about 80 to 90 miles after I get some gas. Um, and then, once I get on that, I should hit the coastline today. That is the goal. So, once I hit the coastline, I'm getting the hell out of up north, and I'm going down to Cali, where it's 65 degrees. It's currently right now 57 degrees, so it's not bad. Short sleeves. Yup. So, I'm ready to rock. Um, I do need to find a place to do laundry, though. Um, unfortunately, I did not find that little tidbit of information out until, or didn't think about it until this morning um, and when I noticed that all my laundry was dirty. So, uh, yeah, I'm working on uh, my last pair of pants. Yeah. So I need to get that situation rectified. So try to find some laundry and try to find the coast today. That's the goal. See you. So can anybody tell me exactly what this is? It looks like a submarine, but it also looks like a boat. What the hell is it? All right, so I am on the um, Azalea Glen Road in Azalea, Oregon. I've been traveling uh, right at around two hours to get down here, but I'm back on the Transamerica Trail. Um, I wish that I would have traveled south down Highway I think it was five that I was just on. Yeah, Highway 5. Uh, I wish I would have traveled south further than I did uh, from Eugene. Um, I believe that I would have been able to find that uh, less expensive hotel room. But it is what it is. And we're moving forward. So I'm back on the Transamerica Trail and I'm headed west. And hopefully today I will get to the coast. I don't see why I shouldn't. Uh, but I have a feeling that I'm about to come up on some really pretty mountain passes. So stay tuned. You know, the scenery here, minus the mountains, looks a lot like home in South Carolina. Um, kind of crazy. I was just riding down the street here and I noticed it. But then you come over to the opening where there's mountains and you realize you ain't in South Carolina no more. Alright, so I've come up to a spot um, on the Transamerica Trail here that uh, the road evidently goes through a sawmill or something um, but it's turned into something now and you can't can't go through so I've got to reroute and backtrack so let's work that out all right so we're climbing up on McCullough Creek Road um, it's been a steady climb since I got on it so it's getting a pretty high up I can't wait till I get a view because I'm sure it's pretty um, whatever's in the back is rubbing against the door. It's about to drive me insane. Um, if you don't know me, 
One thing that you need to know is that little creaks and sounds and squeaks and stuff like that will, it'll drive me insane. It'll, it'll make me blow my damn eardrums out. I mean, I can't stand it. It drives me insane. But anyway, that's the current situation. And as soon as I get a view, I'll show it to you. Right now, this is my view. Um, still a pretty view, though. Can't beat it. You know, this is unfortunate whenever you come up on spots like this and the trees are just all gone. Um, you know, it provides for good view, but it just reminds you of how much damage we as humans do to this earth. It's just crazy. Alright, so I got a little bit turned around. Uh, there was a fork in the road. Um, I decided to go the way less traveled. <laughs> that was the wrong way. So I had to turn back around. Um, added some new pinstriping to the uh, to the old Forerunner, so I'm sure it's all scratched up. These are tight trails, as you can see right here. Um, had I done this in my Tundra, which at one time I had thought about doing, um, there would be no way that I would be able to do this. Um, it, it's just that's an incredibly wide vehicle, and I just don't think that had I been able to do it, it would have definitely been scratched up far worse than this is going to be so but nonetheless anyway i'm still on the trail i'm making another climb up i'd went up the mountain and came down the mountain um hopefully this time i can get you some views i forgot to videotape some views but i did get some pictures of the views maybe i'll add it into this video when i make it so nonetheless that's what we're doing it's about three o'clock um i'm hoping i'm still hoping to make the um, goal of the coastline by today so hopefully i can take a picture on the pacific coast uh, today and that would be good so, holla. so I was able to come up here and get a little opening so I could show you a little bit of the view by the way I don't think you want to fall down that here's the view so they call the Smoky Mountains the Smoky Mountains and the Blue Ridge because of the bluish haze that it keeps over it but I've noticed this has got the same type of haze there's the apple as far as the eye could see nothing but mountains over there Hopefully we come up on coast soon. Look how big these pine trees are. I mean, that's huge. Look at that. That's wild. Alright, so. Looks like the next major road that I come up on is Highway 101. Which is highway that I wanted to take or that I'm going to take down the California coast the iconic highway um, so I'm excited about that now the one thing that I am um, somewhat not really nervous about but somewhat um, concerned it's on the radar let's put it that way is the fact that I've got in between a quarter and a half a tank of gas truck says I've got a cruising range of 115 miles the little GPS the Garmin says that it is 30 from the last uh, deal it says that it's only 30 straight miles um, to Highway 101 so I think that I should have plenty enough gas to, uh, to get it there to get us there but nonetheless I am ever so stoked that I am almost to the Oregon coastline, the Pacific Ocean, Highway 101, the iconic highway. Pretty stuff. Oh no. Looks as if we're going to have to break out the chainsaw again. Alright, so I got one out of the way. Now I got another one in the way. I didn't see it first. Um, but. Nonetheless, chainsaw's working good. Thank you, JR's Automotive in Lexington, South Carolina, for hooking us up. We appreciate it. 
Otherwise, this part of the trail would have to be rerouted. And uh, you know how much I love being rerouted. Celebrated too soon because just as I was celebrating, I went to go start up the chainsaw. I've been here for 30 minutes trying to start the thing up. No start. I'm tired. I'm going to bypass it. All right, before I reroute, I'm going to try one more thing. I'm going to try pulling it uh, with the truck the same way that I pulled the... Um, the one that I already, that I already cut, so I'm gonna try pulling it that way. Maybe if I'm lucky, um, we can get it somewhere just out the way. Let's give it a try. I don't think so, Bob. <laughs> this shit ain't working. Let's see how far up my damn way I gotta go. So I'm on National Forest Road 3348, um, and I'm rerouting because of the two trees that were in the way. I was able to get the one tree out, um, and then I had a malfunction with the chainsaw. Couldn't get it back started again. I thought I was out of gas, so I filled it up with gas, but uh, that didn't work. I messed around with it for about 30 minutes, trying to get it to crank up, rest it, and let it see if it flooded out. Tried it, nothing. So. Although I will say that uh, it was probably something stupid or something simple that, that would fix it. And a lot of chainsaw buffs out there might be able to, you know, diagnose it over the video. I'm not sure. But what I will tell you is that uh, my broken collarbone uh, sure has flared up since I'm trying to mess with that thing. So I don't think I'll be doing that no more. Um, it was easier just to reroute anyway because the little fork's right around the corner from it. So... We'll catch back up to the uh, Trans-American Trail, and I should be on the Oregon coast here very shortly, which would be um, mighty great. Uh, that would be a great success story for today. So, that's what it is. All right, so right here, I could actually use the power of video tell you that oh, we've got past all the trees and we're on Transamerica Trail and we're about to be to come. I could do that. But I'm not going to do that. What I am going to tell you is I rerouted and came right back to the Transamerican Trail as I thought that I would on the National Forest Road 3348. What happens is, as I've known or as I've seen through um, <clears throat> Using this map system that I got from Sam, it said rock on there. So using the map system I got from Sam is one thing I will tell you about Sam's maps is it is a lot of winding going back and forth, back and forth, and it kind of weasels in and out of uh, main roads, in and out and around main roads, which is cool. That's the whole point of it is the fact that you know not too many people travel these roads. So. Uh, but nonetheless, anyway, I'm back on the Trans-American Trail and um, hopefully to the coast here real soon. Alright, so I'm <clears throat> backtracking again for the third time because the GPS can't figure out where the hell it's at. Um, so what happens is, is there these forest roads, because one goes up the mountain, one goes down the mountain, they run alongside one another for a while. Well, the GPS... Is, is I'm following Sam's tracks and the Sam's tracks are good they're on there the problem is is the GPS uh, the exact location isn't necessarily on point sometimes it is sometimes it's not and it's really aggravating so for example I took the right way where I'm going back now to the last fork I took the right way at the beginning but the GPS had me so far off track that I said well I need to turn around go the other way 
then I'll turn around and went the other way. Then it took me even further off track. So the GPS is, it's like it's off and I don't know why it's off. Um, I've got all the, you know, the, the location and everything on the way that it needs to be. Um, I'm not real sure, so. But nonetheless, the Garmin E-Trax 20 is the one that I have, uh, for those of you that are wondering, and I'm backtracking yet again. All right, so I just stopped to put some gas in because I was at about an eighth of a tank, and, you know, I probably still got... A ways to go with that but the problem is I don't know how much further I gotta go because the GPS said a while ago that it was 30 straight miles so I had assumed that uh, you know adding the twists and turns maybe 10 extra miles and I've already traveled that and it looks like I still got a long way to go so I'd rather be safe than sorry better to have it not need it need it not have it so I took my reserve gas and went ahead and put it in all right, so um, just looking at the GPS, uh, looks like I am a straight uh, 16 miles so uh, from the uh, port. Uh, I can't remember the name of it, but nonetheless, I'm getting closer, so should be there by nightfall. And 16 straight miles should be about 26 to 30 regular uh, mountain miles, I guess, whatever you would call these is what I'm going to assume. Alright, so Port Orford is where um, I will be ending the trail, uh, or right outside of it, so looking forward to it, and it's coming up ever so close. What's up guys, it's Will Adams and I finally made it to the end of the Transamerica Trail. I'm on the Pacific Ocean, yes, and if you can see my face right now, I'd be filled with a huge smile. I couldn't be happier. This means that that part of my trip is done. Now, comes the second part of my trip where I go down Highway 101, connect with Route 66, and then go all the way back. BMG, my Garmin, e 20, we made it. I navigated the whole 7,000 plus miles I've driven with this guy. Y'all need it. Until next time, folks. Check it out. The beach. That's what I'm talking about. Now let's hope I don't get stuck in this son of a bitch. <laughs> God, that would be horrible. Well, I could think of worse places to be stuck at, but. Isn't it gorgeous? The sand is no fun to drive on. Alright, so I made it to the uh, Pacific Coast in Oregon and um, got stuck on the beach. Luckily some fine folks, one of which had a, I hate to say it, a Ford. Um, anyway, um, I'm out. So gonna go now I'm gonna go find somewhere to camp and then we'll go from there so um, now I've also got to find somewhere to get uh, tire pressure because I've let my tires all the way down to 10 so hopefully we can get that handled and rectified rather quickly Peace. saying that his uh his tires feel like they're gonna fall off the bead too so we just gotta take it slow which um yeah that's that's the deal is fucking slow anyway these guys are cool as shit um i greeted 
as I was stuck frame deep into the sand of the beach because I'm an idiot that drove down there, I was greeted with beer from this guy that I'm following. Still ain't got his name, but anyway, I was greeted with a beer. He said, here, have this, and we'll figure it out from here. And he said, well, have two beers because I thought you had somebody with you. So, yeah, so cool people. Um, good deal. I got to watch one of the most amazing sunsets I've ever seen in my whole entire life. Um, on this coastline <clears throat> with some rocks in the background that I guess uh, from what the lady that was collecting all the wood that you see in the back of that Ford pickup she said that there was a um, earthquake in the 1700s that actually left that like that and then the land used to be all the way out there and it's probably six or seven miles out so just really cool area man um, Port Orford uh, Oregon and I'm back where marijuana is legal and widely accepted by the folks around here, uh, which is um, different, which is pretty cool. So, um, nonetheless, I need to put air in the tires because it feels awful. But uh, we're rolling down now. What's up? Yo, so I just left the gas station. I got gas. I'm full up now. You can't pump your own gas in Oregon, which I think that's crazy. Um, also, where I went, the guy that helped me out, or the guy that I met at the beach or whatever, um, he likes Corona, so I was going to get him some Corona. And the gas station, believe it or not, doesn't sell Coronas. Um, you had to go down to the Circle K that doesn't sell gas craziest shit I've ever seen in my life. Nonetheless, that's where I'm at. Eating my, my dinner of champions, which is this here Doritos. And uh, now I'm looking for a place to camp. He said he's going to show me where to camp at, so that's what we're doing. Peace! This is Mitch. We're in Port Orford, Oregon. And we're at, what's the name of the bar? Agates. Agates. It's a type of rock. Check this There you go. Shout it out. Where are you at? Where are we at? <laughs> we made it the last call, everybody. Shout out, where are we at? Portford, Oregon. Portford, Port? Port Orford. Port Orford. Alright, so I met some folks at the bar that are going to let me camp out in their driveway versus driving to the campsite that's going to charge uh, 10 20 bucks. Um, the other option was a dock that a guy had showed me, but um, I think I'm going to be out on the dock because it was not really a place to camp out. <laughs> he was just like, oh, well, if they do come up, the most you'll owe is 10 bucks. Oh, so that's not really a place to camp out. Um, anyway, so I'm following these guys. I'm in Port Orford, uh, Oregon, Oregon, and uh, was at a little... Uh, bar and food and bar whatever it's called and uh met these cats and they said that i could camp out in their driveway so that's what i'm gonna do hey! what's up guys it is sunday the third sunday i think we're on day uh 1920 something like that of the uh of the trip and i'm waking up i'm in port orford oregon um i slept at uh mitch's house which is a guy that um, I met at the Port Orford Bar, uh, pretty cool people, let me crash on his couch, that was nice of him, uh, it was very interesting because we were drinking beer and Mitch's grandparents who live on the property, it's about five acres or so, Mitch's grandparents who live on the property uh, are Mormon, so they're out on beer, so we had to keep the beer hush, but nonetheless, uh, cool place, <coughs> cool people. Uh, just went and visited the Cape Blanco Lighthouse. Cape Blanco Lighthouse is the furthest most western point in the United States. Um, there's no video of it, and the reason is is because really, it was, I mean, it was a lighthouse. It was cool because it was the most western point in the United States, and that's about it. Um, other than that, I didn't get a real good shot of the lighthouse. Didn't get real close up, so wasn't nothing really to report there but just know that i went there and just know that i put my foot on the furthest most western point of the united states so that's pretty cool um anyway so now i'm heading down to 101 and 
I will take Highway 101 all the way down to California. However, it's a lot longer than I thought it was going to be. I don't know why I was thinking, you know, trip from, you know, Florida. I was thinking it was like a trip from Florida to South Carolina, but evidently it's uh, a three-day journey. <laughs> it's a thousand miles from where I want to go. So, uh, so we're going to go ahead and start that journey today. And uh, I'm going to get as far as I can today. And then from there, I will... Uh, track on and try to find somewhere to camp out and uh yeah so that's what we're doing that's what what we got going on that's what's happening so peace till next time see you. stop looking at me that turn all right so i found this little uh spot to turn off on Let's see what we got here nope, nothing can't go any further so, that guy's like, uh, yeah, dude, I'm living here right now. <laughs> Alright, so I'm on 101 and I'm traveling down uh, the Pacific Highway, uh, Oregon Coast Highway, whatever. Um, it's 101, though, nonetheless. Uh, it is absolutely beautiful all the way down through. I'm super, super excited. I gotta, look at that. You know, being from um, from the east, when we go to, at least where I'm at, when I go to the beach, and even when I lived in Florida, um, it's 100% flat whenever you go to the beach. So to be above the water and then see it down there is a, is, is a sight. That's pretty cool. And then to see the mountains inside the water is really neat. So um, just a really cool deal. If you've never driven down the Pacific Coast Highway, I'd highly recommend it. Um, and I'm glad that I chose to do it as part of my trip. Um, now I just need to find a good breakfast spot on this highway because I am starving. So this is Cape Sebastian um, Road, or uh, State Park, right here off of the Pacific Coast Highway. Trees are so dense that you can't even see through them, and I just think that is wild. I uh, just got a good picture of the coastline. Uh, looks like on down some, there's a rock with an arch in it right through the middle of the ocean. I can't wait to get up close to that. I'll show it to you whenever I get to it. But yeah, current situation, beautiful roads. As promised, here you go. Look at that. Awesome. Just beautiful. Interesting. I was just sitting here thinking as I do a lot um, because I'm riding down the road with nothing else to do. And I was thinking about, uh, you know, Mitch and his uh, and his brother, the people that let me stay the night at their house last night, their uh, grandparents also live there. It's their, it's been in their family for, you know, 70, 80 years, this whole five proper, five acre deal. But anyway, uh, they're Mormons. They don't drink, they don't smoke, they don't, they don't believe in none of that. And the whole family is this way, except for, of course, Mitch and uh, his brother. Um, they are completely against alcohol, however, the pot, they allow pot. It's okay, uh, I guess because it's a natural plant or whatever, but alcohol, no. Um, <clears throat> I thought that was weird. The other weird thing, not weird, it just kind of goes to show you, is they don't drink, they don't smoke, and every single one of them are in their 90s something to think about so they don't drink they don't smoke and they're all in their 90s except for like I said Mitch and his brother so just something to think about I thought that was pretty cool